I, I have to laugh to myself because I was so miserable for my entire life and I was so self-obsessed. I believe that my happiness and well-being really relied on me uh, modifying my thoughts, emotions and feelings so that I didn't experience negative things, what I termed to be negative. And that was my, um, basically what I tried to do my entire life and it, it didn't really work. And I'm sure some, if not all of you, have tried to do that, tried to get rid of things you don't like in terms of your thoughts, emotions and circumstances, and then try to hold on to things that you do like or get more of them. And uh, usually as human beings, we have the same lists of what we like and what we don't like, usually. I mean, there's probably some things that I really like that people would really hate. Um, football, I, I really like. But um, you see, I, I, I'm much more comfortable of, of talking about football and things than I am about flawless, pure love. Um, and, uh, but when I do talk about flawless, pure love, it, it, it almost brings me to tears. And uh, this is because this, the, pra the practice of balanced view, which, which is extremely simple, has essentially revealed to me that you know, I, I am perfect. And the evidence of my perfection was all of the things that I tried to change about myself. So things like depression, anger, boredom, sexual desire, anger. Did I say that? I've said that already, haven't I? <laughs> anger. You know, I had panic attacks. That was a good one. Um, just generally feeling hopeless about the state of the world, you know, really wanting to change all of the injustices in the world, but getting increasingly desperate and realising that I couldn't do anything about it. Um, and so all of this amounted to quite a miserable life, really, because I, I, I really believed that I needed to change these things and I couldn't. And when I, when I was introduced to the, the practice of balance for you, just to leave things as they are, now I'd heard this many times before and I'd been to teachers and trainings that had postulated this before. You are already perfect. Um, you, don't need, you, know, you don't need to do anything. And, I, and it, was just like, it was just annoying. You know, I'm not perfect. The world isn't perfect. And, um, and my, my experience wasn't an indication that anything was perfect. And this is the very powerful thing about this training is that, just like we heard Candice mention, having an intellectual understanding that everything is perfect, or having an intellectual understanding that everything is inseparable, or having an intellectual understanding that everything is included. You know, all of these ideas that we learn, that's nothing, that's meaningless, it's, it's worthless. You need the direct experience of what's being described in these trainings, which is what Balanced View gives you. And uh, you put, some of you probably don't believe me, but... When I, was, when I came to my first meeting, I didn't believe a single word that I was saying. I, I found it really quite annoying. There was all these smiling people and, uh, you know, lots of Americans. I didn't really like Americans at the time. And, you know, I was, I was really at the mercy of my opinions and belief systems about good people and bad people and, you know, just, just totally self-obsessed. And so what was, in, what was introduced to me very early on in this practice was that if I just turn up, if I just listen to the talks that are on the, on, on the website, if I just read the books, then that alone is enough to start to bring the experiential re recognition of what's being described into my experience. And I, I, I didn't believe it, but I, what, it was like genius. I, I, I was expecting some really, really rigorous and awful practice, you know, to be revealed at some point, like, like and we've all probably done them, like, sitting still for two hours a day, four times a day, drinking water with lemon in it, you know, things like this and nothing else <laughs> for 10 days. And, um, and I've, tr I've tried things like this um, and I, couldn't, I can't sit still for five minutes, you know. And so I, I, was, I was so desperate for relief. I, I wanted to experience, when, when I was 15, I had really lofty ambitions for myself as an individual. You know, like I wanted to be famous, basically, and probably for all the wrong reasons. But, but um, as I got older, my ambitions got less and less and less to the point where I was in my mid-30s. And all I wanted was to feel slightly OK some of the time. <laughs> that wasn't too much to ask, was it? And, I, I, you know, I had prayers like this, like, you know, 
you come on, what's going on? That's not, that isn't, at least grant me that. And, uh, and, and, and you see, because I, I really believed that my thoughts, emotions, circumstances were an indication of where I was at in the world. And um, like we heard in the talk, really we have no control over any of these things. As much as we would like to have control over our thoughts, emotions and circumstances, it's very clear that we don't. Now for most of us we probably have the same collection of thoughts and emotions and circumstances that sort of, you know, just keeps coming back and back. But every now and again you're going to be dealt something that is quite shocking. It might be shocking in a good way or it might be shocking in a terrible way. And um, we've, we've just spent our entire lives believing that we, we can control this flow and we need to control it, even though the evidence clearly points that this isn't, isn't the case. So in Balanced View, you're, you're given a very simple instruction to start to see that amidst that flow of unpredictable, ceaseless appearances, there is an underlying serenity, so to speak, a calmness, an openness, an alertness that's always present. In the Balanced View training, we call this open intelligence. And a very easy way to introduce yourself to the experience of open intelligence is just, is just to stop thinking. So you, you can do that now. Doesn't last very long, does it? Because something comes immediately comes back like, what is this idiot talking about or something like that and uh, or a sensation so so the dynamic responsivity of open intelligence is very clear it allows for all the appearances <coughs> but it's so 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 when when you do that when you stop thinking there's an undeniable openness or a presence in your experience it's very difficult to pin down and if you try and locate it, you can't even say it's, it's inside or it's outside. It's just uh, it's something that you recognize. So the practice of balanced view is simply to relax and acknowledge that presence whenever you remember. And what you'll find is that it's, it's your own thoughts, emotions, sensations, basically your life that provides you with the choice to do that. So anger is a great example. I mean, my 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 interpersonal relationships have changed dr so dramatically in that I used to be very competitive and argumentative sarcastic and the way I would relate to people would be just to show how, show how much uh, knowledge I had about anything really um, so that was the way I would relate to people it was a, it was a comparison of knowledge and and uh, I, I would feel uh, intimidated by people that knew more than me or had more knowledge than me and superior to people that that I had, you know, blah, blah, blah. So when I was introduced to this practice, to see that um, anything that arose in my experience, say for example, anger or frustration, it's, if I meet somebody, immediately, and this was for most people, I found them irritating. Um, what they were telling me I found quite boring. Um, and the reason for that was because I, m my own experience of my own life was that it was boring. You know, so when somebody was enthusiastic, enthusiastically sharing with me something they'd done in their life that they found really interesting, in the in my head I was just like, oh, you know, yes, 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 yes. Can you stop talking? You know, and uh, I, it was just a horrible way to be. And now the reason reason for that, like Lizzie shared, was that all I'd emphasised for my entire life was my my own shortcomings, what I need, you know, why I didn't me measure up why everything in my experience was pointless because it didn't provide me with, with any sort of well-being and so I saw this in myself and that's all I saw in anyone else and even if I did see someone that was very very happy and and content that made me feel so <coughs> bad that the only reason that the only way I could get any sort of satisfaction was to drag them down to my level of misery and I did that by being very cynical and critical in a very intelligent way or very humorous way sarcasm basically and so it was, uh, it was quite a, I would say, disempowering way to be. And some of you probably know this, this way of relating. I mean, I honestly probably can't really remember a conversation I didn't have with my, uh, uh, my close friends that wasn't based on sarcasm, you know, from me and my friends. It was just a relentless exchange of sarcasm, <laughs> you know, basically. Faulty towers, basically. 
you know. And so what, what happens when you start to listen to talks, um, show up to meetings like this, just hang out with people who are relying on, on the support structure of balanced view, then you do start to recognise your flawless nature in your own experience and, and it's inseparable from the things that you don't like especially. And this is really important so you might find it a bit annoying or strange that a lot of the time in the meetings and in the talks we talk about afflictive data, you know, like negative data and the reason for that is because once you start to experience relief as negative data, so completely relaxed ease as inseparable from the experience of anger, for example, that is very powerful. Most people don't have a problem with experiencing that with happiness. Um, nobody's looking for relief from happiness. I don't think so anyway. But, but, <laughs> but, but believe it or not, we do get people who come to Balance View who are totally happy and they have great very content lives, you know, f wonderful friends, family, very successful. But even happiness and contentment isn't, isn't the answer. I mean, that, that's quite an eye-opener. And um, so you've all read in newspapers about people who are conventionally very successful, who have everything they could possibly want, and yet they're in and out of rehab all of the time. I'm not, I'm not saying this is the case for everyone, but it's, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's very, very uh, frightening when you have everything you could possibly want conventionally and you still feel empty and unfulfilled because you can't do anything else. What can you do? People like me, who generally weren't very successful, still trying to get <laughs> clawing up the ladder of, you know, like uh, to get more money or to be, be more successful or to get a better intimate partner or a intimate partner. You know, or, or you know, all of these things that we we we're, we're told will lead to happiness. So, you know, money is a classic example. There isn't a single person I would say who isn't concerned about money. You know, just look at what happened recently, in, or, or in the last th three, four years. Candice, when I first met Candice, she used to say, "What would happen if all your money disappeared overnight?" And everyone would go, "Ah, oh, ha, 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 that would never happen. That will never happen." And then what happened about three years later? millions of people all over the world, they, their, their banks disappeared, not their money, the bank disappeared and the country as well. <laughs> but the point is we, we place so much emphasis on conventional ways of, of finding well-being that when, when a crisis comes up, um, all, generally speaking, all we can see is, is, is problems and what needs fixing and, you know, I need at least fifty thousand pounds to sort this out and, and and so again that habitual way of relating to a situation and circumstance just brings up a, like a a chain of, of of insurmountable obstacles so the solution is is really simple is 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 and I don't, I don't want to sound flippant here but when you start to recognize that well-being is present in, of, as and through everything that's going on in your own experience. Now that gives you a perspective that, that is, is, is very, very powerful. So fortunately, fortunately it's not just that instruction because that would be really annoying. You know, th th there are obviously practical things that need to be done. But you have, um, the specifically there's a money training, which is uh, something that I would recommend that anyone does. The Balanced View has a, a training on money and uh, there are some very practical um, suggestions that you can implement immediately to really get clear on how best to use your finances you know, in, a, in, a, in a really, really clear way. And I'm the last person on earth who is, you know, I'm so financially uh, irresponsible, I would say. If I have money, I just give it away and buy presents for everyone and then I've got no money, that sort of thing. But since coming to Balanced View, so an, an example of one of the practical su suggestions is to keep a simple log, a little book. Every single thing you spend, you write down what it is, how much you spent. And at the end of the week, you go back and look at it, and it's just like, it, for me, it was just like, what? I mean, I'm virtually buying magic beans every day. You know, th th things that are just totally worthless and totally unnecessary. And... Um, and it's great being around other people who are relying on open intelligence because they'll say that to me directly. What are you doing? <laughs> you really don't need 
I was going to buy a laser pointer. It was like a, a, an industrial laser pointer, and it had a range of about five miles. <laughs> and I was just going, oh my God, I can point, I can point five miles. You know, like, out, like I, I was in Goa, and, and, and they were just looking at me like this, like, uh, mm, you know, that really isn't the most beneficial way to spend. I think it was like, you know, a hundred pounds or something. And um, you see, I wouldn't bat an eyelid before this training, just buying it and then maybe using it a few times, and then that, that's it. So, so um, and then another thing you can do is to write to your trainer and, ha you know, really have a practical way of, of uh, supporting yourself and the people that you need to support, because it's not just about relying on open intelligence, you know. There are things in the world that need sorting out desperately, but until you recognise in your own experience that you are okay, completely okay, it's impossible to f act effectively in the world in a very empowering way. And so, you know, we see this with, with worldwide organisations and just, you know, communities, even, even our own community, is when it's based on criticism and judgement and things like that, constructive criticism is what we call it, then most of the time when you're in an organisation, um, the, 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 the management is spent, um, spends a great deal of energy sorting out personal issues. I mean, that was my experience, that it, it, it was 70-80% of, of, uh, of, of management time was spent sorting out why somebody doesn't like someone else and this person said that about that person and why did you give this person my job? Don't you think I can do it? You know, do you, do you not like me? Or, or all of these things. And I was, you know, that's how I used to react to my parents, for example. I would, I would deliberately not phone them for six months because of something that they said to me, just so they knew how much they'd hurt me, you know. And, uh, and when you start to rely on open intelligence, you have a massive revelation, which is nobody is thinking about you, you know. <laughs> no, nobody, nobody could care less about what you're wearing or what you look like. You know, I was obsessed with my weight, I, totally obsessed with it, and I, I used to think that everyone thinks I'm too fat and, you know, what do they think of me when I, you know, and, and nobody's thinking about you at all. And you're just, you're just completely trapped in this description of, of, of it's just completely, a complete fabrication. Now, your parents think of you. Yeah, they do, all the time, I'm sure. I don't have children, but, you know. But uh, other than that, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that nobody gives you the time of day because they're just obsessed with their own thoughts and what they need and what other people are thinking about them. It's just a joke, you know. It's, it's so, so it, what you'll start to see it really is that you're, what you've been looking for is is already present. That there's there's a complete, total, fantastic feeling of okayness all of the time. It's got nothing to do with with whether you feel good or bad. And um, so the support structures of balanced view will, will, will reveal that to you in your own experience. So really from the heart, just test what I, what, what, what's being put forward here. So, you know, come, you've got such a great community here, such amazing people, you know, really driven people with, with really great ideas and really, you know, people that really want to make a difference in the world. When you combine that, with open intelligence, then you, 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 you're, you've just got rocket fuel. Uh, rocket fuel's a bit rubbish, isn't it? It's got to be something better. Antimatter or something, a bit more advanced. <laughs> but, um, so so all, all of this you can test in your experience. So it's not a question of believing a single thing that's being said here, but just by testing what, what, what's suggested, like listening to talks, coming to meetings, watching videos, participating in some trainings, then you'll see in your own experience if what's, what's being described here is true or not. And uh, I didn't believe a single th word that was said here. You know, how can just sitting here saying the same thing over and over again or listening to the same thing over and over again have an effect? And uh, it's been the most amazing thing in my life. And then finally, my favourite topic, sleepiness. <laughs> is uh, it's, it's really, really powerful to start to see that all of the conventional descriptions we have about ourselves and our experience, like sleepiness, 
and all of the descriptions that go with that, like when I'm sleepy, I'm you know I can't function properly. I need I I need it makes me um, angry and uh, I can't concentrate and all of these things. They're not actually related to that at all. And in fact, the 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 the, the appearance of sleepiness is packed with re really vital alert energy. It's the most amazing thing, it's crazy. But having said that, if you have the opportunity to go for a sleep, go for a sleep. I mean, I love sleeping, I love it. I'd sleep all the time if I could, but unfortunately I can't. And, um... Because, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I was convinced that sleeping was a problem. I, I, I was convinced it was a cause of my depression and being um, overweight. And uh, when I came to Balance View, I was sleeping 18 hours a day. 18 hours a day, oh, it's paradise. <laughs> but you see, it was torture because, because I, 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 immediately upon awaking, I would think, you know, I'd feel so tired anyway, and I'd been asleep for like 13 hours or something. But then it would be, oh, you've got to get out of bed, you've got to do some exercise. If you don't do some exercise, you, you could never have a girlfriend and you'll be fat and you'll be miserable. And, I, and then another voice would go, oh, but it's so warm and I'm so <laughs> sleepy. And when I go to sleep, all of this negative data, it just disappears. I want to go to sleep. Get up, you lazy bastard. <laughs> Oh, leave me alone, you know, like this, and then, and that. Would, as soon as I woke up, I mean, it's so exhausting, and it's like, and then, and then another thought would say, "That's okay, go back to sleep. You can do some exercise tomorrow." And then I, <laughs> and then I go back to sleep, and uh, you know, I'd wake up like four hours later, and 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 be just relentless guilt and blame and judgment, and all day long about, and and so so I had all of these stories and descriptions that limited me. And when I, when I saw Candice and I, the first open meeting, I said, I've got such a problem, I can't stop sleeping. And I just, like, like that. And she said, oh, what's wrong with sleeping? And I, I just, you know, like, I just uh, immediately, it was just brilliant. I just went, went home and I went to sleep. And it was just a, the best sleep I'd ever had. And then now, now I, I would say I sleep about 10, 10 hours. I'm, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And uh, and uh, and I do feel tired a lot of the time as well. But when I have to do stuff, I can do it. And the solution is is short moments. It's amazing to be to be really really tired, you know, feeling physically tired where your eyes are like that, and and still be able to function in a completely powerful way. Having said that, I've I've never. You know, like 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 I always said, do not operate heavy machinery when you're. I'm not suggesting that you're, you know, like doing a chainsaw sculpture while you're <laughs> almost falling asleep, like relying on short moments, because that that's just going to be a disaster. But uh, uh, another thing that's really powerful about uh, relying on open intelligence when you're when you're sleepy is if you do have the opportunity to to just take a quick nap. As you can practice short moments as you drift in and out of sleep, and it's the most amazing thing because you won't. At one point, you you won't. You don't know if you're awake or you're you know, awake or asleep. Or hang on a minute, am I even there? And then you wake up, and then it's you know. So it's a it's a really powerful opportunity to just um, rely on relaxed, open intelligence with the perception of being an individual. You know, of being, of being someone, because at some point you'll be fully aware and fast asleep at the same time. It's really, it's great. It's really powerful. Um, and so th these are all things that you can you can be in touch with your trainer with. And then just very quickly about about breathing. I mean, there are so many practices where you focus on the breath. Um, and uh, open, <coughs> open intelligence is it supersedes everything. So everything that you can possibly know and experience, it, the basis is open intelligence. And when you die, your breathing is going to stop. But open intelligence, you'll still be aware, even if it's for a nasty couple of minutes. Now, if you've been relying on observing your breath or anything like that, when, that's, when your breath stops, you are going to have such a horrible time in those last moments. Whereas if you rely on open intelligence, then... That's that's that that's that's always present. It's always there, and again, this is something. It's not it's not an esoteric, weird statement. The, the, the instructions given by Balance View will enable you to see this for yourself. 
that there is something about you that's totally indestructible, totally unaffected by anything you're going through. It doesn't even require you as, as an individual to be. So this is something that we've, we, we, we've believed in for our entire lives, that we generate awareness as a physical entity, but it's in fact the other way around. How many of you have recognised that you're a physical human being in the last 20 minutes? You know, like, oh wow, I am Adrian, I am, a, I am separate, I am sitting here. It's, it doesn't happen very often. So you don't have to think about any of this. Just, just try, try listening to some of the talks and see what happens.